My name is Anusha Subramanian. I'm a dancer, teacher, and a dance movement therapist. I trained in Kalakshetra, um, India. Um, I trained in Bharatanatyam. And I was working with movement um, in different contexts. I was working in special need contexts. I started using movement uh, with uh, people who are blind and who have auditory impairment. And um, slowly and steadily, all of that brought me to England and London. Did you know that? Mm. Oh, yeah. Did you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, and my training as a dancer in India, um, um, because I trained in Kalakshetra and the schoolings I, I had gone to, or the schools I had gone to, um, it taught um, dance or education as a way of life rather than um, a means to a profession. And in a, in a way, that's how I still am. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I've gathered um, not just um, Catherine and Vaishnavi, but all, largely my students or my dancers, as I like to refer to them rather than students, are, um, I think, are journeying with me and are in a continuous journey with me as people. And because I am a Bharatanatyam teacher and a, and a performer and a choreographer, um, I tend to have people who are journeying in dance as well. Mm -hmm. So you know that's. I thought. I think if I if I was doing something else, um, I would have gathered people, you know, in that field to journey with me as well. So I think being a, a dancer in a way is accidental to who I am. Mm -hmm. I think it's 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 is in 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 a manner. <laughs> Probably you'll probably hear this quite a lot from me. Um, um, I grew up uh, all over India. My father was um, a traveller. He had a travelling job. So I, I was born in Kirki, and then I went to Jammu Kashmir, to Punjab, um, to, um, to Bengal, um, and everywhere. And finally um, went to college, to Kalakshetra, um, to train as a professional dancer. But I was dancing every, everywhere. Um, and I think that's why I don't have a sense of whether I'm a um, Tamil or, I mean, my Subramaniam name suggests that it's a Tamil name. Um, but um, I, 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 I mean, when I uh, am in a Punjabi environment, people think I'm, I'm North Indian, but not Punjabi. But when I'm in a Tamil environment, they certainly don't think I'm Tamil <laughs> because the way I look and I don't speak Tamil uh, in the manner that people who Veda are from Sri Lanka or um, have grown within the Tamil Nadu area. So, uh, and, and then in a way, and that, that's why I'm quite very eclectic. Um, I've been engaged uh, in dance uh, in the UK um, in the mainstream. I'm very much, I place myself in the contemporary dance world. Um, I've done um, somatic training. So that is um, understanding experiential anatomy. And that's how I teach dance as well. So, um, and I think that uh, connects uh, my, my mother's desire at some point for me to have been a dancer and a doctor. So it's not very far from being Tamil, isn't it? Yes. Vaishnavi and we, uh, I joke, because um, Vaishnavi is a doctor. Yes. And we joke that, you know, being a Tamil, you know, you have to either be a doctor or an engineer. And I think um, um, in, in, in everything that I've done, um, dance therapy, um, somatic training, and using dance and science, um, to teach what I do, uh, I think I'm kind of bringing that together. Um, and, and UK is extraordinary in terms of its um, professional development and training. Um, I'm part of a, a, 
um, a program called CAT, C-A-T, not the meow cat, <laughs> but uh, it's called Center for Advanced Training. And what it does is it trains young people from the ages of 11 to 16, um, or gives uh, young people from the ages of 11 to 16 a professional training in their chosen art form. Um, um, and there are 10 studios around UK. Um, dance Exchange in Birmingham is one studio which trains um, dancers uh, in Bharatanatyam and Kathak. And I'm the subject leader there. Uh, uh, Laban has a dance science degree. So, the, you know, there's lots of exciting um, stuff in dance happening. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Catherine, I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I remember a story you said why you got interested in Bharatanatyam. Because you're a curator at the v &A, uh, now. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but we, you, you have a very deep connection with Bharatanatyam. And yeah, so should I talk about how, yeah. I, got, how I got into it? Yeah. <laughs> um, I you haven't heard the story. No, not me. No. Um, well, I'd always been into some kind of dancing, ballet, from when I was about five or six. And I loved it, but it was always just a hobby. And I carried that on until I was about 15, 16, um, and then exams and college and university sort of got in the way, but I was at university and just really missing doing some kind of dancing. Um, and my boyfriend um, was studying sitar quite seriously and doing um, a master's in ethnomusicology at SOAS, so I was going to a lot of music concerts. Um, seeing a lot of different um, programs and then saw dance programs advertised and, um, and started to go along and, and I saw a Bharatanatyam performance at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, I think it was um, Malavika. Oh wow, Sarukai. the person to see and get inspired. Yeah and it just, mm -hmm. um, it just really, really impressed me. Um, the sort of the beauty of the dance, but also its energy, um, and there's that really strong connection between the solo performer and the audience. Um, mm. So I came away from that thinking, okay, where can I go for classes? <laughs> <laughs> and I started go to going to the Bhavan, and I was mm. commuting from Oxford to the Bhavan Centre to do um, to do classes. And then um, a few years after that, I was looking for another teacher, and um, and came to Anusha's classes. Where was I teaching then? It was, um... Was it White Line? It's been to White Line, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So I've known you for a long time. For a long time. <laughs> that was, that was, must have been about 12 years ago. Yeah, gosh. Um, yeah. And, and I just got gradually more, kind of, more hooked and sort of um, pulled in at various points. I sort of thought, no, this is silly. It's, it's so time consuming. <laughs> what, you know, what am I doing? Yeah. Spending so much time in a dance studio. And yeah. I would, I would stop. Um, but then... I'd miss it so much, I'd kind of come back. And of course, I, I can <laughs> kind of keep tugging. And I, I do this with people who are a, enormously talented and uh, who I can see, you know, that there is this real deep passion um, for Bharatanatyam um, and who are just, you know, lovely, lovely people. Uh, and... and uh, and there is a connection in terms of how we relate to dance and art. So, you know, come on, yeah. Catherine, do more, do more. And yeah, and I think probably our relationship has been as much sort of sitting and talking as, mm. as, as teaching as well. Mm. Um, as and learning from each other, yeah. isn't it? I yeah. mean, and I think that's one of the things that I, um, I certainly think as a, as a person... I'm constantly learning, and you know, uh, my teaching style today is um, so different mm. from anybody who teaches, certainly who teaches Bharatanatyam or Kathak or one of the mm. South Asian dance styles. Um, and uh, yeah, how is yeah. it different? How is it different? You, you experience <laughs> it, and then I can tell you how <laughs> it is different. Well, I suppose. Yeah. Shall I start with my story, and then that that will tie up to that question? Uh -huh. um, um, so I'll tell you a bit about my story, um, which will tie into the last question. Um, so I'm uh, Sri Lankan or of Sri Lankan origin. Came to this country when I was two, um, and my parents were sort of 
uh, big fans of the, the fine arts. My mum learnt singing, carnatic vocal, and um, and my si older sister, who's five years older than me, had started dance classes. So when I was five or six, I really wanted to get going with that, and was quite keen and eager. And used to go to um, so my first teacher was with Selva Lakshmi Ramakrishnan in uh, Ealing, um, and I used to go to weekly dance classes, and you know we'd have school performances and things. It was very much. Um, uh, within the Sri Lankan community um, and then when I was 14 I think the natural progression as in with a lot of uh, these girls was to have her at our room so um, I had that I was 14 which is, um, seems like a, a world away sort of half my life away um, and then um, when I left to university at, at 18 I didn't really um, dance or didn't go to any dance classes um, I perform in the odd uh, show for sort of India Sock and things at university, but a handful of times, but really had a bit of a break from Bharatanatyam. It was only when I moved back to London um, about a year and a half, two years ago. Because um, you've trained as a doctor, isn't yeah, it? Yes, yeah. so I went to medical school mm. um, in, the, <laughs> in the interim period um, and just did my sort of thing. I wasn't really particularly um, interested in getting back into dancing. I performed when I could. Um, but really had a sense of, you know, when I came back to London, just a, a real sort of itching to get back into it for some mm. reason. And it just so happened that I have discovered Anusha at that time. It's sort of almost synchronous, synchronicity. Um, and um, I just went to Anusha's classes in the beach, um, beach classes on Friday at the place. And the first class, I just loved it. I loved Anusha's style, her sense of fun. Um, and particularly that you're, you were talking about sort of your anatomy, the, the uh, focus on really experiencing your body mm. um, and body movement, um, which I felt as an adult, um, I could really get that sense more. And particularly in the last few years, I'd really got into yoga um, and I was really sort of discovering myself in that sense. It's also deepening your practice, isn't it's it? Yeah, it's a deeper it's, practice um, and really yeah, uh, being aware. Of about yeah, yeah. Uh, of yourself, mm. not just physically but emotionally, emotionally and personally, yeah. because it's something that I was speaking yesterday, isn't it? In class, I find that when you're able to embody mm. who you are and who we are, then there's a greater sense of um, celebration right. of ourselves, right. and therefore you can celebrate others. Yeah. And in a way, this kind of ties in also with my. Um, I, th I think a deep spirituality mm, mm. about um, celebrating all our all of ourselves mm, mm. and um, yeah. yeah I mean Nick. yeah for me what Anisha's been able to do as a as a teacher that I've not experienced before is sort of techniques to put emotion and feeling just into pure movement because mm. um, obviously Bharatanatyam has its Abhinaya content but even in the pure dance as well to to visualise your body and to put emotion in, and quality into your movements such that even just repeating the most basic exercises isn't mm. boring because you're constantly finding something new in them and finding a story in them mm. um, and that dramatically changes the quality of the movement as well mm. um, and speeds up the process mm. of, of learning you know, just the basic technique. Yeah, actually that's a good point in, in terms of speeding up, isn't it? Because yeah. I've noticed that myself um, and that's the excitement mm. of, of, you know, dancing and, um, uh, and teaching, I think, is, is a constant learning. Mm. Because yesterday, um, I mean, you had, um, uh, if people know this, otherwise they can Google and look up, your Nata is is so sharp and so clear. And we looked at the idea of turning mm. from the hips, mm. from the pelvic joint, mm. Um, and even it, when you were talking about the seventh night of the video, you're sort of reaching yeah. out and imagining reaching the stars, or you know, <laughs> we, we, you're quite playful in that yeah. sense of, and it really, really does help to aid yeah. aid the movement if you yeah. just. Do you think yeah. it makes it, um, uh, you know, energetically easier as well, um, and muscularly yeah, I it's, easier? It sort of distracts yeah. you maybe from the occasional pain. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it gives you you're just able to understand how your body works and mm. it doesn't become just skeletal movement. Yes. You're able to yeah. um, yeah. you're able to through metaphors of visualization you find the bit of the body you need to to change Absolutely. or to work on. Um, yeah. it's just a, a very good form of communication I think. 
Yeah, I mean, certainly in this um, um, country, I mean, because I trained as a, uh, uh, I trained in Kalakshetra as a professional dancer, I mean, my, my aim and my intention have always been um, to work in, in the professional dance field. And so um, having moved from India to the UK, as as a as a dancer and as a as a as somebody who's experienced an extraordinary learning base, mm. it's something I also want to kind of create mm. for the dancers, mm. um, and uh, and uh, and not um, teaching in a in a kind of community context. My context is um, everyone. Mm. Uh, and certainly my intention, and you both know this as well, and everyone knows, if I can get you both <laughs> to be in the professional dance world fully, you know that, isn't it? I keep trying to, I told Vaishnavi, mm, come on. Learn me from medicine. <laughs> Learn me from medicine. Now that there's dance medicine happening and I teach anatomy. Yeah. Um, but I do know that, um, um, uh, you know, um, I'm because of the, the, the focus uh, being um, wanting to teach on a professional level, even to, uh, you know, dancers who, you know, uh, when kind of, I don't like the word, in, in that sense, hobby, but yeah, uh, you know, a, a, a passion um, on, to a professional level. Um, and, and, um, and then equally, um, as much as possible um, to train professional dancers. Um, and I fa found that training dancers in this country, I needed to get it very efficient. Mm. And my, uh, you know, as a, as a dancer, you know, um, always wanting to engage with different things, I discovered yoga here, mm -hmm. you know, the Iyengar yoga, and it was like a, a you know, a revelation that, wow, you know, what if I taught BN like mm -hmm. that, which means people can um, take full control of their learning and it is not in my control, which I love anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, every you know, then others become responsible. Um, not um, having a studio um, and and resources to be able to afford, um, you know, teaching every day because uh, whether it's studio costs and my personal cost, you know, dancers can go to yoga classes mm -hmm. or Pilates classes, mm -hmm. and I know that um, because of that. Um, I'm in a privileged position to have created a lot of uh, professional dancers mm -hmm. uh, who are there, out there in the in the in the professional mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Sarah Wichlow, do you know her? I you don't, don't know. know. Yeah. But you met Elena. Elena, yes. Um, it's and it's girl. such fun. But uh, did you know? I know she went and saw her performance, isn't it? Uh, with Sadhana Dance Company, the I Shiv didn't know Shiva. That. <laughs> Shiva, you saw it. Yeah. So, and then of course there are other dancers who've trained in India but needing to retrain um, so I've been able to offer mm. mentorship but uh, I also conversely not only the, from the professional side you were talking about sort of yoga and that integration with Bharatanatyam yeah. but I think you can take that to your day-to-day -day life and existence that sort of mm. again going back to the awareness of body mm. and self mm. and that um, even with you know that mm. that sense mm. just improves your yeah. quality of life. Yeah. yeah, and you have said said this because as a curator, um, being a dancer, how much has it's helped you uh, with your presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, in, in many ways, I mean, a basic confidence to, to get up and speak in front of people. Um, if you've performed to an audience, then <laughs> suddenly to give a lecture isn't quite so scary. Um, but I think people have uh, people have noticed that my communication skills have got better um, and more ex yeah more expressive um, in the way I lecture. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely helped. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of poise and yeah, just the way yeah. you carry about. And also just to be forced out of your comfort zones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, for me the you know the, the physical dance training really pushed me, um, and and then to get up and present that in front of people um, mm -hmm. took me you know. A long way beyond my comfort zone. Now it's easier for me to do that in other areas of my life. Definitely. Yeah. Why did you choose to do it? I mean, I don't even remember why. I know I keep um, um, getting people 
um, to do a solo primarily because it allows us to deepen our practice yeah. uh, more than anything yeah. and, and particularly um, I mean I um, target is not the word <laughs> but I, I, I tend to um, suggest that to a few dancers who I know are very deep in their practice already mm. and you were someone who had uh, you know you know a natural ability because of your earlier ballet training as well mm. um, but a natural ab ability to want to really deepen yeah. your practice. No, I, I remember because I'd, um, I'd been doing more and more dance and then I went to Chennai with you for three weeks right. um, to, um, to have lessons there and to do a more intensive um, sort of practice. And I just remember us sort of towards the end of that time, sort of sitting down, thinking, okay, what, what next? You know, yeah. how can I've had this great three weeks, but now I'm going to be back to work, and how <laughs> to, how do I maintain that and take it further? Mm. Um, and so the idea of doing a solo performance, um, just as a focus for mm. us to to go through a particular kind of training, a mm. sort of one to one, which mm. um, and doing things that you can't do in a mm. in a group mm. class. Mm. Um, and particularly, I was really interested in learning the Abhinaya. Um, mm -hmm. side of it mm -hmm. um, and so it was a way of, um, of, of structuring our time really yeah um, yeah and making that time yeah. um, because you know if you have a, a date when you're going to present it to people then you you know mm -hmm. that's, yeah. a, that's a deadline <laughs> so and we had a great time oh, with gosh, it yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I mean Vipul my husband and mm. partner and uh, the wonderful genius for many things and I'm I'm mm. not sure whether you came for the dance or his food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I would I would I would come to Nisha's house here um, after work for a class, um, and then yeah, Vipul would feed me. <laughs> feed us really, um, because yeah. and it is and, quite then, and I would stay the night and get up. At and six we in would the have morning, a six o'clock morning class. Have another class, and then I go to work. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, it was quite crazy. <laughs> it was. It was very intense. Yeah. Um, having an evening class and the mm. early morning class, mm. and you, mm. you, you're going to work, um, and uh, yeah, and for me, the joy of, uh, uh, yeah, really, um, as much for you, I think, to to give the the deep practice mm. I had undergone in a way, yeah. all this, you know, um, things that you can't really dialogue. Uh, in a in a in a regular class, which I mean, mm -hmm. I I tend to do a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Because the way I I teach and you know mm -hmm. I, sometimes I, you know you know I've be, I've brought poetry and stuff like that to class, but it was very particular and and mm -hmm. most joy was teaching Abhinaya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. and we were talking earlier, isn't mm -hmm. it, Vaishnavi? Catherine was natural. Yes. <laughs> it's total natural Naika, um, with her. Maybe you should talk about why you're doing yeah, your solo so and, you know, so, so intensely. Um, I've um, been lucky enough to have some time off work. I'm just moving fields, um, moving into public health. So I've uh, got a job and um, I asked whether I could take some time out between that. And I've never had time off before. I've gone from <laughs> school to uni to no gap year before. Oh. So this is um, a good time that I wanted to make use of um, to further my understanding um, of Bharatanatyam. Uh, so then um, we sort of had a solo performance as a kind of target. Just, yeah. But as you, as you said, it, was, it feels now at the moment not so much the goal. I've, it's very much the process and the journey, mm -hmm. which I didn't feel when I was, you know, when I was 14. I was just, you know, it was just willing it to, <laughs> it was hard finish. work, but I just wanted the day to happen. Um, but now it's a lot more deep, and when we, we, we have classes, as we, as we said, we you know, discuss Hindi philosophy, or, you know, mm. Anish has lent me a lot of her books, sort of Natya Sastra and Abhinay mm. Darpana, and really going deep into mm. the, the understanding of Bharatanatyam, which was my own really nice break from medicine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but hopefully, I mean, it's constantly doing uh, also that transference, isn't it? When you learn something very deeply, mm. um, and this is something that you were also talking about, Catherine, when you learn something deeply for its own sake, then it has um, value in everything mm. that mm. one does. Mm. You were saying about um, how one, your father so beautifully always suggested that um, education and learning 
is not for anything but yeah. for um, just becoming who we are. Yeah, no, he, he um, before I went to university, he sat me down and said that you know, you know, going to university is not about jumping on a career ladder <laughs> and getting a well paid job, it's you know, you have three years to learn and you, you learn for knowledge's own sake. Um, and it's Very yeah, nice. I guess I feel the same yeah. about yeah, I feel yeah. the same about dance really. Yeah, and I think, I mean, um. You know, as people, I, I've known you know known you, um, and I, I I'm sure that who you are and how you are, and everything that you do is going to um, have those very subtle effects of making the world a better place. I mean, because <laughs> I mean, in a way, that's uh, for me. That's why I teach dance. That's why I dance, and that's why I I, I think. Our deepening practice engages in in in, in that. Um, maybe we should talk about the process a bit, so that mm -hmm. you know, it'd be a nice conversation. Yeah. I mean, um, maybe so let's start with you. I'm currently in the process. <laughs> You're of, in the process, yes. so. Um, so I'm hoping to have a solo performance in about less than three weeks now. Oh. Um, and um, so it's a traditional marg or classical margam. Um, so uh, about six months ago. Um, just sat down and sort of brainstormed for ideas and things. And I actually started off by going to Chennai. This was the beginning of my time out of uh, work. So um, Anisha put me in touch with um, Shobhana Balachandra, a good friend of hers, and um, kind of distinguished artist, a yeah. um, uh, senior student of the Dan and Jane. So I was in Chennai for f uh, five weeks, yeah. um, just having some daily practices. Because um, that was quite important, isn't it? Yeah. Because one of the things, um, uh, uh, I mean, you came to Chennai. I had forgotten that, you know. Yeah. Because you've come to Chennai twice. twice yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow. Um, uh, and yeah, you've been wanting to come many <laughs> more times. But the thing is, um, what one recognizes that it, here there isn't a, a, a place where we could have a daily practice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, your focus was sort of dance and nothing else. I had no other friends or social life or anything. And that it, too, and yeah. So you can put your single whole single whole minded, yeah. And um, um, yeah, and so you know, going there uh, and to do a bit of music and talam and all of that mm. um, is really mm. useful. And also, it was a nice opportunity. I saw about three performances from Kalakshetra mm. there. Mm. There's just constant yeah. kind of music and dances in. You know, the in the air, as it yeah. were. And also, it's 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 something again that we were talking about that when you learn a, a, a dance style or or a, a, an art form um, outside of its cultural context, in a mm. way, or it's not cultural context, but its environment where it naturally is developing. It's just nice to go and experience mm. it mm -hmm. because to me, um, when we present, uh, I mean certainly in dance, I, mean, I, I think as, as people, um, we are layered by our experiences mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and by going to a place, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's part of your yes. um, cellular memory yeah. <laughs> and yes. it, it's, it's just so interesting just to be walking around the street in dance gallery <laughs> and going into the autumn and they wouldn't think twice because, you know, with Kalakshita there's so many students Walking around yeah. in the half hour. Yeah, Kalakshita yeah. and now, you know, that whole area, yeah. Besanagar Adiyar, just so many dance yeah. studios. Yeah. Um, you know, Bragaka is just around the corner, and Dananjian Sir, and mm -hmm. Shobhana, and CV Sir, and, you know, all sorts of dances, and um, yeah. um, so it was everybody really walking good buzz, in. And yeah. It's tough to coping with the heat for dancing yeah. at 37 degrees. But. And on concrete floors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is something that we don't do at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm very um, conscious of, um, you know, health and efficiency for dancers. So we try our very, very best to only book dance studios. Yeah. And, and that's a sort of another difference. I noticed sort of the focus on warming up and warming down and really taking care of our bodies with, with Anusha is sort of very good at you know, making sure we have a long warm up and that's something I didn't really, I was quite not, didn't do before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because as you know, and I keep kind of reminding myself and all of us that we have to dance at least till we are 100. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, that means you have to look after yourself. Your yeah. knees can't go, oh, mm -hmm. I have to be able to do my dear level. Um, what about your process? Do you have a memory of it? 
Um, or in, in sort of working towards the same yeah. thing? Um, yeah. Because we did a lot, I mean, for me, the Abhinaya process with you um, was so deep and also the body journey, but, uh, you know, we uh, because we were also, it was um, um, in terms of, uh, unlike uh, you, Vaishnavi, um, uh, uh, philosophically, it was uh, it it centered around Hindu philosophy and characters from the mythology, um, yeah. and and language was also very different. Yeah. For for you, um, I mean, yeah, I remember doing a lot of. So um, we did a lot of research and you know. Yeah, kind of an analyzing the characters um, in the in the songs. Mm. Um, yeah. Talking about it, I would go away and sort of write sort of further narratives mm. to sort of try and make each verse slightly slightly different and um, also uh, um, each of the characters so that they connect to who you are now yeah and you know as Catherine yeah um, but also uh, looking at characters because in terms of Bharatanatyam the Abhinaya or uh, I find um, uh, the beauty of the dance is is the nritta and the natya, the uh, you know the drama element, is allowing us as dancers to be actors mm -hmm. to journey mm -hmm. into characters. So yeah, you're right. We were looking at you know a, I remember the Husseini Varnam. She yeah. was a you know in a oh, feisty yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> feisty woman who said you know come on you you know, you know I, I know what I, you're up to. I know what you're yeah. up to, and I, I'm gonna. You know, hold on to my ground. So, yeah. you know, how do you um, mm. make that real um, um, uh, for the style mm. and for who we are mm. today as women, yeah. and and also how do we then also connect it to spirituality and philosophy, and and that's something that I have also loved because it's about um, journeying as you you are deeper into the metaphors, the symbols, and, and kind of a, a connection to a larger spiritual base mm. than to a faith-based, mm. mm. yeah. wouldn't you agree? And I, I was very interested in the, um, the history of the dance form as mm. well, from the sort of the 19th century when it was outlawed to it being mm. revived in the 1930s as part of the sort of nationalist movement. Yeah. Um, so to, to be working with sort of text that was written in the 19th century, which is a sort of period of my specialism anyway um, that was really interesting mm. to sort of to yes to absolutely to see how it's relevant on a human level in contemporary times but also to sort of look back at the think about the places they were performing mm. the, the costumes they wore the social context it was written mm. in that was really interesting for me as well um, yeah I mean as a historian that would yeah it was a sort of almost yeah there was an element of sort of yeah historical archaeology in, <laughs> in you know in using those texts, yeah. And, yeah, it's like lived archaeology, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in a, yeah, I mean that's a yeah. that's a nice thought actually. Mm. Yeah, I mean in a way, as dancers, uh, yeah, we are constantly reinventing history and you know reliving our own and other memories. Mm. And mm. I I like that. Mm. I love that idea mm. very much. Nothing uh, stagnant. It's always a, it's, it's always ongoing. Uh, ongoing. And for you, it's an interesting discovery, isn't it? Mm. Because you're somebody who's who loves the physicality mm. a lot, mm. um, and Abhinaya yes. was something that <laughs> you were not be. sure yeah. you could actually pull off. Yes. And more and more, I have a sense that you're able yeah. to. Yeah. So getting there, I think always I've been a bit sort of embarrassed. Well, I suppose when I started learning dancing, but I was very young, kind of uh, prepubescent even, and was a bit embarrassed about doing uh, Abhinaya. Um, but I think now, you know, I'm 28, I've got slightly more world experience, maybe not, not enough, but, you know, things like uh, aspects of, you know, love and things that mm -hmm. you, relationship, relationships yeah. you can really, really kind do. of get, it, get yeah. into now yeah. um, rather than then.